Hello, I'm Malcolm Hazlitt. How do you find out how to work in television and the amazing work of Yogi Dev? Let's find out more about those two men next on Our Time. Oh, it's great to have your company once again. Now, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. And our very first guest is Reese Jarrett. Reese is currently hosting a movie uh, or hosting movies on Channel 44 here in South Australia. And here's Reese Jarrett. Howdy doody, Michael, and everybody watching at home. Thank you. Reese, now it's interesting because as you as I just said, you've got to start somewhere. Yes, absolutely. And you started by I started by volunteering at C44 um, when it was called C31 and yeah. I was a work experience kid in 2010. How old were you then? I was about 13, 14. Yeah. That makes you 23. No, sorry, 25. Sorry. 25. Yeah. Yeah, that, we, we lose track of age ourselves too now. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. What are you talking about? <laughs> But um, what attracted you to television? Well, I think like any young child who grows up watching television in the afternoon, you just get really um, fascinated by the stories that you see on television, as well as the technology and the fact that you can watch all of these, everyone can watch all of these pictures at the exact same time as everyone else. And it just always made me think about the technology behind it and the people who put the work into making it, and it really fascinates me. Yeah, see, I was fascinated with theatre stuff, but when television came along, I just knew that's what I wanted to do. So I identify yeah. with what you're saying. Yeah. Absolutely. So you started volunteering doing what? I was just a general lackey. So when I started at Channel 31, which was called at the time. It was in a warehouse. Yes, it was in a they warehouse. Had a little in sort of Theberton. cardboard studio at the back. <laughs> cardboard studio, though we can't call it that because I know the person who made it and he okay. put a lot of effort into it. Oh, so. Actually, yes. it did. It's true. It was like yeah. a little house built inside. It was kind of a little uh, shack almost. It was. <laughs> it really was. But it looked great on camera. Yeah, absolutely. A little echoey, but it was great on camera. Mm. And so. When we started as uh, work experience students, we got a bit of a taste of everything. So we managed to have a go at hosting a little interview like what we're doing right now. Mm. We also put together a little recorded and edited piece uh, by the end of the week. So it was a whole structured program almost where we managed to create something uh, during that week. And we could actually take that back to our school and then show the effort that we put in during that week, right. which was great. And did you get, was that marked as part of your, um, you know, yes. school? Yes, so uh, oh, during, during year 10, uh, most South Australian school students go through work experience and they choose a, a place to go to and do some work yeah. experience. And uh, I chose 31 and um, you do get evaluated based on what you're doing at that work experience spot. You actually have a teacher coming in to actually evaluate what you're doing. And I was one of the only teachers that I I remember I was the only student that was there that actually had a teacher that came to the... Oh, right. <laughs> yes, that's so, interesting, isn't it? So some of them are a little bit... Some schools are a little bit more uh, free and just push people in towards that general direction, but some actually evaluate you. And that was interesting that I had to get evaluated. But, uh, yes, it no, no, came... No, no, but that teacher deserves an accolade for doing that. <laughs> yes. Who was it? Who was your teacher? Uh, you? The name I can't exactly remember right now. I do see him occasionally in public. But well, you know, it's interesting because I remember as a kid and, and because I teach um, quite a bit myself yes. now, it's great to see students who come back and make reference to you when they've achieved something. So check that out. Yes, someone absolutely. Will do the same I'll have to remember him because he yeah. did help me push into the right direction, as did the and entire And it's so school. valuable to have a teacher that does exactly. that. Exactly. So, so, yes, um, as I remember from hearing from the American um, educational expert, uh, he, he said that education is a path to liberation. Absolutely. It's a path to living a better life. It's a path to everything, really. Yeah, absolutely. But you've not just done that bit of volunteering, obviously, because you got sort of caught up in the whole thing, yes. didn't you? Yes, yeah. So just talk about all the other things that you've been involved in. Yes, so throughout my life I've wanted to try and give back to the community. 
So that's one of the reasons why I started volunteering at Channel 44 for mm. many years. It's also some of the re one of the reasons why I helped uh, other people that I went to high school with to start a charity called Kids Arthritis. And right. that charity is a community support charity that helps the one in 1,000 children that live with juvenile arthritis. Yes, who would have, who would have thought? You yeah, know, it's, as we get older, very we surprising. start to feel the knuckles. But for children who have that so young, it's awful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, we both came from the Adelaide Hills and we've yes. just been chatting about the fact that Reese's grandfather ran a garage that my father both bought a car from and prior to that also filled up with petrol. And he did that um, for most of his working life and he was very loyal to the Jarrett family Yes, at Bridgewater. Many people are up there, yes. Isn't it wonderful though because that sense of community we're losing but that sense of community is also transferred into the community television as well. Absolutely. So what are you doing now on community television? Well, I am presenting the Saturday night feature presentation here on 44. So mm -hmm. I present the movie of the week that Channel 44 receives and uh, puts to air. And it is the major film that they present during the week. So. Right. And how do you research that? How do you know about them? Well, the station provides me with the film prior to broadcast and I watch it. Free films? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's None one of, of the perks. downloading one stuff. One of the perks. Well, you do have to download it. Oh, you have okay. to watch it well. somehow. <laughs> but um, we, I watch the film and then I write up a small description as to what the film is to help the viewer who has just turned on their television understand what they're about to watch. Right. One of the reasons why I did that is because there is a lack of continuity sometimes between some shows on television and I feel that adding a little bit of extra information can help the audience learn about what they're about to watch. Well, Albert, who works at the station, said put glasses on him <laughs> and he's the new Bill Collins. Right. So anybody in my age group would remember who mm. Bill Collins was um, and he was really the doyen particularly of the so-called golden years of Hollywood knew all the stories yeah. about all the actors and the directors and so on. So how much of that sort of information can you glean? That's something that I am still learning. So much of the films that come to 44 are from independent filmmakers who are local here in South Australia. Which is fantastic. Yeah. And do you get a chance to interview them or to... Not of yet, but that's something that I hope to do at some point. I would mm. like to you know, expand on the final segment of the, the presentation to bring in the move, the creator of the, the movie and then they can tell their story a little bit more as to why they decided to make this film. So why do you feel that community television is so relevant? Community television is relevant because it is the community actually broadcasting to themselves. And the community has knows their interests better than what a major media corporation does. And... I feel that the, bet, the more that we as a society can get involved in making the media that we want, then we're going to appreciate that media more. Look, I couldn't agree with you more because I've been banging on about this my whole life. <laughs> yes. I, because we all have a voice that we understand locally, like we've just said about um, coming from the hills and we just discovered that our camera girl over there, she right. also comes yes. from the same area. Same towns? Yes. In fact, I went to school with her grandfather, which is <laughs> absolutely amazing. And, and, but that's the beauty of being in a community. Yeah. And again, for people living in Victoria as well, watching this program, um, the same thing is occurring in Victoria because clearly uh, local television in Victoria does uh, accommodate a lot of Victorians. This is free-to-air stuff. But it's the niche people that come out of community television. It's getting your start in exactly being before the camera, I guess. And I think the structure of community TV, uh, as much as I feel that it can be improved in many different ways, I think the fact that you have a community-led organisation, baked into law, by the way, they have to be a non-profit yes. from the community and they have to present stories that are relevant to that community. So that, that's an actual legal requirement of community TV, community broadcasting in general. And the fact that that requirement is there means that there is a space for almost any voice on television and radio in mm. this country. Because there's always somebody that wants to listen. Even if it's just one person, there's yeah. always someone. And this is such a great way to communicate with the public. Hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> what do I want to do when I grow up? That's something I'm still kind of working out. Uh, we'll see how we go, but I'd like it to involve uh, video production of some kind. And I'll In front like... or behind the camera? 
both. I, I came from behind the camera and I've merged towards the front of the camera and I like to work in both spaces. I feel it's a very interesting field. You can learn about many different facets, facets of storytelling as well as the technology involved. Yeah, well, you've got a good head for it. And like, Thank you. Like people used to say, you've got a good head for radio, meaning your looks weren't fantastic. <laughs> but see, so you've got a good smile on your face and, yeah, good luck, well, Reese. Thank you very much. I hope that it's going to work out in the way that thank you, you plan. Thank you. Hang about and we'll see you at the end of the All show. Right. And we'll be back with somebody very special who is actually standing behind the camera that's looking at me right now. We'll see you in a tick. As I said before the break, the man who is behind that camera is now sitting beside me. This is Yogi Dev. Welcome, Yogi. Hello, Malcolm. The reason that I thought it was great for the people to meet you... Yeah was because you have such a fascinating backstory. Thank you. And you're also an artist. But let's talk about your backstory first. Yeah. So you were born in? India, Punjab. Probably you know people like lots of taxi drivers here. They're from Punjab. <laughs> Are they? So, yeah, mostly. Okay. Yeah. And your family left the Punjab and went to? No, my parents still live in India. Oh, do in they? In Punjab, yeah. But I left it to UK. How old were you? Uh, I was 21, I think, yep. That's a big ask to leave a family, yeah. particularly a close Indian family because yeah. Indian families are close. They're very close, yes. And why? Just like, you know, I've always been on a just man of just flying, you know, I, I want to see the world. So, right. So I just so took a decision. So you landed in the UK in and the became? UK. Became a real estate agent and builder and a few other projects as well. Everything. Um, was some. that to survive or was there a community there that you could join? Uh, there, 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 there is always a com community there. So mm. I had my extended cousins there. So um, then I did bear studies and uh, opened up my own company. And then well, I ran that company for a good six years. So were you dealing mostly with people from India who were living in the UK or was it just across the board? Across the board. Across right. the board. But mostly, mostly Indians. And why did you choose the UK rather than somewhere else? I don't know. It just happened. I suppose because of the history. Yeah. And I had family, extended family there. Right. And they said well, that, that you could sense. come. Yeah. So you were selling houses and you thought, this isn't what I want to do forever? At that time, uh, like, I was still into it, but I made a choice to come to coming back to Adelaide because my wife, she's originally from Adelaide. Oh, okay. So I but were you painting in the UK? No. Painting, everything happened. When you came her, here? Came here, yes. How extraordinary. But you were selling houses here first. Too. Here as well, yes. And then you thought, enough of the housing. N enough. I'm going to do what I've always wanted. Wanted to Which do. was? Which was painting and film to do with films and stuff. So, so my artistic side came out and... Uh, yeah, I'm here. Well, now. just so we know what we're looking at and talking about, let's have a look at just three of your paintings okay. to start with. Yeah. Because um, just explain this one. This one is called Pouring. So it's like a large scale, um, two meter by one meter. Mm -hmm. So it's like painting. It's called Pouring. So you pick up your paint and put a medium and uh, mix it all together and pour in a certain way. So whereby that painting comes alive. So it's a painting by chance, sort of. Painting by chance or you but, direct but, in a certain way. Yes. Yes. But you're using your eye to create the final yes. product. Yes, yeah. Um, and this one, I love this one because you've only just done this one. Yes, that's right. And you put it on Facebook and I saw it and yeah. commented. Yeah. And you sold it straight away. Yes, it did, yeah. Amazing. It's, How big is that one? Uh, this one was like um, 500 by 400. Right. So the... And this next one uh, of a face, yes. it's the interesting use of colour. Yeah. Who is that? That, <laughs> that was just, uh, so I had one assignment. So we, 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 I, I was supposed to make a movie. So these, uh, that picture was created at that time. Every time I do one stroke, I make a picture. So, right. so it's, it's a stop still painting. It comes to a live. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I yeah. get that. Um, this one is interesting too because the use of colour and the way that it comes together, 
Um, I really like that. So everything is in the eyes and those lips. So it yes, tells you the whole You do notice story. that in the previous one in the eyes. Yeah. I agree. Um, so not only are you painting, you're doing this at home, obviously, yes. I gather. Yep. Here's some more. Yeah. Um, just the technique, of, I can't remember what this is called. This Which technique. one? This one? It, it's mm. still the same pouring technique as well. And then, and then later on when the picture comes to alive to a sense, then you, you basically take your paint and, and whichever medium you have and just throw a paint in a certain direction so it comes and to And you life. do this in the house too? Your wife must in the love house. it. Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is on the this kitchen is the table, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Uh, yeah, it's a dining table. That's so the one we saw before. That's the one we saw, yeah. You didn't do it there though, did you? No, I did it outside. Right, yeah. that's how wise. Uh, but it's to go on a wall, obviously, yeah. in this one. It's the same same concept on that as well. But is that done with, uh, oh, gee, we used to do it with oil and something. This paint. one is not oil, it's acrylic paint, and then you use a label of silicone in it. Oh, right, to okay. To create those cells. I love that. Yeah. That's just fantastic. Do you name them? I do, certain, yes. That That's just that, like a... What did you call that? This one was a lala. Okay. And the next one? It's like, you know, the inner glow. Inner glow. It's hell freezing over. Yeah. To me. This one? Yeah, this one is one of the, those two are created, the, the previous one and this one are created together. So you're selling your work. I do. And you're also studying at uni at the same that's time. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So this must be must be working all the time, all the time, and then you come in and volunteer to be a cameraman on that's this right. program. Yeah, it's because because that's what my passion is. Like I don't feel tired doing that stuff. No, I understand that. So with filmmaking, what is your what's what's your ambition? What direction do you want to go? Uh, I want to be producer, director, and set up a production company. So we like I have a live at goal that I would produce an Indian Punjabi movie where I come from. Mm-hmm. And uh, to go back there to do it or to do something half there, half there within our culture and your culture, yes, right. So, Australia, like in Adelaide, basically, like it's it's really good place to shoot mm-hmm. and very convenient, it is actually, isn't it? Yeah. Because there's a bit of everything here, that's right, it's not very far away, no. So, that, that, that that's what my plan is like have half of the production shoot here and then half of the movie shoot in, in, in India, Punjab. So do you think that you've got to have this sort of inward passion to push yourself forward? What makes a successful movie producer and director? It's your vision. Like you can bring, have a thought, make into vision and bring it to life. So in my previous paintings and everything, I've been doing this. All, all my DIY, I, I do loads of DIY stuff as well. Mm-hmm. So it's everything in my head. I don't draw much. And I just carry on and do it. Do you feel some people are born to be able to, do, you know, like their bodies will just make the things <laughs> that they can see? I think, yes. Do you feel you're yeah. one of those people? Yes, that's right. So your whole life will probably just be creating. It is. So but can... previous to that, like, I, I wasn't thinking like that. So that was kind of hidden. But suddenly when I quit that industry now, like, my creative side has come to a life. It... Was the, the being a real estate agent, was that something that you felt you had to do for family? That's right. You had to have a I job. Had to, and... ha- have to have a job. And then, then at a certain point we had a discussion that, you know what, I don't enjoy it. Mm. So, and uh, why? So I should be carrying on what I really want to do. It, was there a, a strong sort of cultural push for the family's sake for you? Oh, Did you feel you had to achieve for the family? Yeah, previously, yes. Mm. Previously, yes. But no anymore. How did you break that then? How did you break that? It's just like, you know, you, you think, like, you always think, like, what do you want to do after five, like, you know, after five years? What's your goal? Like, where you want to be? Yes, I and, agree. I and, think we should all ask ourselves such And questions. I didn't want to be doing the same thing. Mm. Well, with Reese in the in the previous segment, uh, talking about exactly the same thing, you know, following a dream or a desire. That's right. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah, well, well, previously, at at beginning when I was growing up, like I always loved the art. Yes, but now now what oh, do no. you want to do as you get older now? I just want to make movies and just 
be behind the camera, in front of the camera, and create lots of art alongside. And your family, because you also have family now. Yes. And how do they feel about Dad being? Oh, they love it. Crazy man. Yeah, they love it. Every like. Make me a movie star, Daddy. Make me a movie star. Yeah, yeah, they're into it. <laughs> they are into it. I'm my, like that. my second number child is he is just on the camera, so confident all the time. Oh, really? All already. He's on YouTube. Like he want to do that. Do stuff. you? Well, do you feel you've given him that in your genes? I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With with Indian family life though, there are sort of restrictions, and particularly from the Punjab, because we talked before, I, I asked you, because yes. you came from there, yeah. did you wear a turban? And you said? I said no. Because? Because, like, uh, it was hot. I it can't, I can't hot. carry it. <laughs> but um, because you've got a mix of uh, well, yeah, belief systems. Yeah, my, my mom's side, they were Sikh, and uh, my dad's side, they're Hindu. Was so. that difficult for them? Coming from Not sort of really. both sides of the tracks. No, really. But things have improved. Improved, yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Not anymore. Stay so. with us for a minute yep. because we'll be back. I've got some more questions for Yogi and also some more questions for our first guest. We'll be back to check that out in a minute. <music> We're here with Yogi and Reese, both have a desire to work in the media, in film and television. You've, you've sort of achieved that to a degree. Yes. It's what's the next step for you, I guess. Yes, that is the big question. Being suppose, on this yeah. program. <laughs> well, that's one of them. There's one for of them. sure. Um, I think the next step for me would be to really get into the swing of making more stuff on a regular basis because content creation is like a muscle and you need to build up some muscle sure. sometimes. Well, that's your thing, Yogi, really, isn't it? It's that's just right. The brain is working on overload, oh, always well, dreaming up something new. That's right. Do you feel like that? Are you frustrated? You can't turn yourself off, Reese? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's hard to sleep when you're trying to think about something and you've got really something really ingrained in your mind. So, yeah, that can be a real issue. It is. A, it. It's the good and the bad, or the yin and the yang, I suppose, of creative people. It's this frustration of not being able to. I want to do that. Let's do it now. Like get a needle and thread and stitch up your mouth, <laughs> or um, or the fact that you can't you can't always bring about quickly what your desire is. How do you retain your your sort of thoughts and planning for the future? You know, I used to be like that, but now I I wait for the right time. So right, so it will happen. So going back to uni as a mature age student, yeah. how have you found that? Because that must I'm be great. Like I'm in my own world. I know what I'm here for, so I'll just do my own thing, right? And learn where, which I really want to learn. But prior to that, whenever I went to uni in the past, like I really wanted a degree to get a job. This time I'm not. I'm I'm just enhancing my uh, abilities Creative and skills. skills yes. yes. And Reese, for the future for you, obviously this is going to go on while community television. Yeah continues but what's going to happen after that do you have a that's a good plan? question that's something i'm going to have to have a conversation about with some people but um i believe that uh we should be able to technically at least um continue what we're doing well online. we'll be streaming yeah of course yes. and there will always be a place to watch independent local community films so there'll always be a place for you to keep your eye on these two guys that you've just met in this program thanks for joining us so keep yourself nice until next time we meet. Thank you very much to you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. And we'll see you soon.